Mike Stritsky and his family live in a modest home tucked into the woods in Hopewell, New Jersey. In late 2006, Mike officially disconnected his home from the electrical power grid and has been making history and his own electrical energy ever since. Mike, an energetic man, has a passion to find a solution for our future energy needs. All of my power is derived from solar energy. What you see on the roof here is 10 kilowatts worth of solar energy, 56 panels. During the summer months, which is this time of year, they produce 160% more energy than I need. Well, most regular solar systems would backfeed that energy back into the grid. I take the excess solar energy, run it through a device called an electrolyzer, which splits water into its base elements, which is hydrogen and oxygen. It takes the uh, hydrogen and places it into my 10 1,000 gallon propane tanks, and it blows the oxygen off into the atmosphere. What you see in front of you is 10 1,000 gallon propane tanks, but they're not filled with propane, they're filled with hydrogen gas. The energy that's stored in these tanks, even though there's a very large field, only consists of 56 gallons worth of propane equivalent or 40 gallons of gasoline. So it's not a lot of energy, but since I'm running this energy in conjunction with my solar system and my geothermal, this is about three and a half months worth of storage for me. Okay, the power comes down from the roof from the solar panels at 500 volts DC. That DC current goes through these four inverters here where it's converted to 240 volts AC. From here, the energy goes into these two inverters here which pull energy from the batteries and provide power for the house. So the two of them work together. So when there's not enough solar, it pulls off the batteries and it, this puts out 220 volts up to the house. Now once the, the batteries are full and we have excess electricity here, it takes the power and runs it through the battery bank down into this device called an electrolyzer. This electrolyzer takes tap water and runs it through a purification system you have here, which is reverse osmosis and deionization. From here it is placed, it runs through another filter inside of the electrolyzer and then into the fuel cell stack where electricity and water uh, are placed and you have the hydrogen and oxygen separation. So you're looking at the hydrogen going out to the tanks you saw outside at 200 pounds and the oxygen being blown off into the atmosphere where it's harmless and actually beneficial to the environment. This is the hydrogen fuel cell. This, this fuel cell is a six kilowatt plug power fuel cell that's used in the telecom industry to power cell phone uh, sites. This is about three times bigger than I need for my house. My house would actually need a two kilowatt fuel cell, but this was the only UL certified fuel cell I could find at the time to put into my house where the Department of Community Affairs would approve the building permits for. This fuel cell only runs during the winter months and it uses the stored hydrogen that you have in the tanks behind me to make electricity, water, and heat. The heat is used to heat the garage. The water from the fuel cell is used to go back and make more hydrogen during the summer months. And the electricity is used to power my house. Well, now that you've seen the energy system, let me tell you a little bit about my house. Uh, the house was built 15 years ago as an energy efficient home. You're looking at a modular house uh, that was built with super insulation, R38 in the ceilings, uh, R19 in the walls, uh, Anderson windows with low E glass coating, state-of-the-art geothermal system, and obviously all the, the, the lighting and appliances that make an energy efficient home. Also, plus a couple of the uh, traditional luxury energy hog items such as a hot tub, a big screen TV, and a swimming pool. The geothermal heat and air conditioning system in this house is extremely efficient. If you were to pay to air condition this house, it would be $600 a year for heat and air conditioning. It would be about $100 in air conditioning and it would be about $500 to heat the house using this system. Conventional systems would be over $3,000. So this system here in my home, which has been installed for 15 years, has already paid for itself going on the eighth time. Uh, the way the system works is simple. 
I have um, a mile of thick wall copper tube buried in the front yard. I circulate the refrigerant R22 through that coil. I extract the 56 degree ground temperature. I run it through a compressor. The compressor makes it cold, runs it through the air handler and cools the house. The heat that's picked up in the house during this cycle is not wasted. It runs through a double wall heat exchanger here and is put into my storage tank which heats my hot tub and my domestic hot water. Then it goes back to the field after I've extracted all the heat out of it. So you're looking at a system that when the air conditioning runs, I get free hot water to boot. This is the main electrical panel for the house. All of the power that powers this home comes from the system you saw down in the garage via an underground cable. I do have a grid connection here that I can turn on at the flip of a switch, but there's no need to. Uh, my solar hydrogen system has three fail safes in it. It has the solar, it has the battery bank, and it has the hydrogen fuel cell. So the grid is the fourth backup, and I have to have three failures in order to need the fourth. Um, the only reason I would come in here is for maintenance on the system to switch over to the grid or to sell power back if I've got too much excess energy. As you can see, I have all the amenities, including the big screen TV. No home should be without one. Mike has proven that it's possible to power your home from the sun. This project is a working prototype and was quite expensive to build. With a grant from the public utility and donations from manufacturers, it all came together.